Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-3627, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-3627 is to be contained in a standard non-humanoid holding cell at site. This paragraph was stricken from the document. SCP-3627 is to be kept in a soundproof containment cell under constant video surveillance. Any recorded instances of unprompted anomalous behavior on the part of SCP-3627 are to be reported to a supervisor of level 3 clearance or higher. Description SCP-3627 is a children's music box approximately 23 by 15 by 8 centimeters in size. The word acrobats is written on the front of SCP-3627, below which is a glass casing containing two acrobat figurines connected at the hands to a rotating axle. At the base of SCP-3627 is a small compartment with the phrase, Dreamy Jasters, written in faded paint. No company or manufacturing labels are present on SCP-3627, and attempts to identify the origins of SCP-3627 have been unsuccessful. The anomalous properties of SCP-3627 manifest when a human inserts an object into SCP-3627's base compartment. Objects inserted by non-human entities have not triggered any anomalous phenomena. Upon the insertion of an object and the closing of the compartment, the two acrobat figurines within SCP-3627 will rotate around the central axle and a series of chime-like sounds will be produced. The exact pattern of these sounds varies depending on the object inserted and the individual performing the insertion. A single iteration of the pattern will generally last between 5 to 15 seconds and will repeat for a period between 4 and 8 hours. Attempts to open the compartment door during this process using conventional means have been met with failure. Subjects who have experienced the effects of SCP-3627 report vivid and emotionally charged dreams. Although the contents of these dreams vary widely between instances, certain similarities are always present. Number 1. Dreams invoked by SCP-3627 always exhibit some relation to the inserted object, whether it be directly through the literal presence of the object in the dream, or indirectly through an idea or an experience that the subject associates with the object. Number 2. Despite the frequent presence of disturbing content within these dreams, Subjects will ultimately view them as a positive experience and will feel a sense of peace upon awakening. And number three, subjects who experience dreams invoked by SCP-3627 will lose any prior attachments to the inserted object, as well as any personal or abstract concepts associated with said object. This is the only known permanent effect of SCP-3627. Upon the conclusion of the musical pattern, the object formerly inserted into SCP-3627 will no longer be present within the compartment. The location of the inserted objects following their disappearance is currently unknown. In place of the object will be a 6 by 6 cm segment of paper containing a typed note. Notes delivered by SCP-3627 are generally between 6 and 12 lines long, and are loosely formatted in iambic pentameter, which has been stricken from the document. See Addendum 3627-3, with an alternating rhyme scheme. While these notes are generally only produced after the insertion of an object and the completion of SCP-3627's auditory process, the appearance of a note without the occurrence of these events has been observed on two occasions, previously one. The notes themselves are non-anomalous in their physical composition. However, the written contents of the notes indicate a level of sentience on the part of SCP-3627. The notes are always directed at the subject who most recently experienced SCP-3627 auditory effects and generally provide cryptic analysis and advice regarding their relation to the inserted object. See Addendum 3627-2 for more information. SCP-3627 always uses plural pronouns when referring to itself within these notes, suggesting that multiple entities may be responsible for SCP-3627's effects. SCP-3627 will occasionally reference its SCP status and its current location within Foundation custody, as well as knowledge of other SCPs and Foundation activities. SCP-3627's level of knowledge regarding the Foundation is currently unknown. 
as is its means of accessing said knowledge. Addendum 3627-1 Initial Discovery SCP-3627 was discovered by Agent during a routine thrift shop sweep in Montana. Upon inspection, SCP-3627 produced the following note. No objects were inserted prior to the production of this message, and no auditory phenomena were observed. Hello, Agent. It seems you've found an object that is worth being secured, contained, and yes, protected for its sound. A wondrous tune that you have not yet heard. Just place a gift into our waiting grasp. A memory that haunts your waking mind. And in return, we shall relax the clasp that keeps it within your soul so intertwined. Your line of work is filled with those who need the closure and peace that we bestow. Bring those that are desiring of this deed. We'll ease the pain and help them to let go. Upon realizing the note contained obvious allusions to the Foundation, Agent purchased the object and delivered it to containment personnel at site. Addendum 3627-2 Experiment Logs The following experiments detail the effects of SCP-3627 on certain individuals upon the insertion of certain objects. Information pertaining to the psychological and personal history of the subjects has been included as it is believed to be pertinent to the resultant effects of SCP-3627. Experiment 3627-A Subject D-2213 Inserted Object Wedding Ring Belonging to Subject D-2213 Information of Note Subject's husband died in an automobile accident four months prior to Foundation recruitment. Psychiatric testing has revealed some severe emotional trauma resulting from this event. Results Subject recalled dreaming of her wedding day. The dream was identical to her memories of her actual wedding day, with the exception of the groom who was motionless throughout the ceremony and appeared to be in an advanced state of decay. Neither the subject nor anyone else attending the ceremony were bothered by this. Upon being instructed to kiss the bride, the subject recalled the transfer of a warm, viscous and malodorous fluid from the groom's mouth into her own. The subject was once again unfazed and swallowed the entirety of the fluid produced. Ugh. Recalling that it produced a warm, comforting feeling inside her. Following this exchange, the groom disappeared and was absent for the duration of the ceremony. Subject awoke shortly after, cutting into the wedding cake. Upon awakening, the subject was unbothered by the disappearance of her wedding ring. Subject reported a strong sense of closure regarding the death of her husband, stating that, I know he'll always be a part of me and that he would want me to move on. Long-term psychiatric analysis has confirmed a notable improvement in the subject's mental health. The note produced by SCP-3627 following this experiment is as follows. No pain is like the bondage of two souls, detached by cruel and unforgiving fate. But true pain is when one's own grief controls the life that still remains under its weight. We cannot say for sure if you will meet again on a distant rising dawn, but if your memories are still complete, your lover's soul is never truly gone. Experiment 3627-B Subject D-4256 Inserted Object Standard Number 2 Pencil Information of Note Subject enjoys drawing as a recreational hobby. Results Subject recalled dreaming of a windowless brick room lit by a single incandescent light bulb. The room bore a heavy resemblance to the basement of the subject's childhood home. Subject recalled frantically scribbling on dozens of sheets of paper and taping them to the left wall of the room. Once finished, the scribblings formed the shape of a humanoid figure. The humanoid figure then emerged from the papers and became a three-dimensional being resembling the subject, although slight differences in facial structure. Subject then recalled being assaulted by the figure and pressed against the wall, causing him to become a two-dimensional being confined to the papers. Subject at this point entered an omniscient point of view, as he saw the figure exit the room through a previously non-existent door, which led into the street of a suburban neighborhood. 
At this point, the passage of time appeared to increase in rate, as houses on either side of the street gradually decayed and were overgrown by plant life. The figure was seemingly unaffected by this process and stood motionlessly in the street. After several minutes, the passage of time returned to a normal rate, and a mushroom cloud indicative of a nuclear detonation appeared in the distance. Subject awoke shortly after, watching the figure slowly melt in the street and detecting a strong odor of burning paper. Upon awakening, the subject showed little interest in drawing. Subject displays no displeasure toward drawing and was able to draw upon instruction with the same level of skill as before, but stated that he just didn't feel any desire to do it anymore. To date, the subject has still not partaken in drawing or any other visual artistic medium without being instructed to do so. The note produced by SCP-3627 following this experiment is as follows. The one and only noble goal of man, to leave one's mark forever on the earth is strived for through whatever means one can. Create a piece of true artistic wealth. Alas, the subtle marks upon one's soul cannot be cloned by any moral hands. A life is better lived when short and whole than stretched across the ever-shifting sands. Experiment 3627C. Subject, Dr. Inserted object. Video recording device remotely connected to a viewing monitor. Information of note. Experiment aims to observe the destination of objects inserted into SCP-3627. Dr. Head of SCP-3627 experimentation performed the insertion in order to gain a better idea of the dreaming process. Results. Subject recalled dreaming of a hallway located in a foundation containment facility similar to Site. The hallway was lined with containment cells containing numerous SCPs. Subject specifically recalled seeing SCP, 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 and SCP, despite none of these SCPs being stored in the same facility in reality. The subject recalls being suddenly overwhelmed by a feeling of dread and sprinting through multiple corridors in an attempt to exit the facility. The layout of the building was nonsensical and labyrinthine, containing multiple unnecessary loops and dead ends. Upon locating the exit, the subject ran several hundred meters from the facility before gaining enough composure to look back. The facility was several hundred times larger than any active Foundation site, and had the same approximate dimensions as a human heart. The outside of the building was lined with several thousand containment cells, each containing an SCP. The facility began to beat at regular intervals, sending tremors through the surrounding area. Subject recalled losing balance from the force of the vibrations. The tremors slowly increased in magnitude until the surrounding land shattered and the subject was left falling through a black swirling void. Subject awoke shortly thereafter. Upon awakening, subject destroyed all video footage received from the inserted recording device, stating that some things are better left unexplained. Subject later submitted a formal resignation, was administered amnestics, and released. The note produced by SCP-3627 following this experiment is as follows. The human's sense of curiosity is what puts them above the animals, but there are things that a man should best not see, that can't be kept within Foundation walls. The tortured minds of ancient horrors shriek. Their calls can shred the earth and tear the skies. If their secrets you do persist to seek, then you're seeking your very own demise. Further experimentation on SCP-3627 has been discontinued indefinitely. Addendum 3627-3, Incident Report 20 on 20 87 days after experimentation on SCP-3627 was discontinued, SCP-3627 produced a pattern of tones without the prior insertion of an object. These tones could be heard outside of SCP-3627's holding cell and caused two D-Class personnel to fall unconscious. This was the first instance of SCP-3627 invoking REM sleep in multiple individuals at once. The pattern of tones was repeated for 2 minutes and 34 seconds, a notably shorter duration than those previously observed. 
Upon the conclusion of the pattern, both subjects awoke and immediately attempted to access the holding cell containing SCP-3627, first by attempting to guess the access code, then by repeatedly ramming into the cell. Their activity was eventually detected by the on-site security system, and armed Foundation personnel were dispatched to the area. Both subjects were successfully terminated before causing a containment breach. SCP-3627's containment procedures have been updated accordingly. The following note was found within SCP-3627 shortly after the incident. We revealed ourselves to you so that you would take us in. We did this because we knew you had no short supply of sin. We thought we'd help you to let go, to ease the guilt and help you heal. But we were fools, for now we know that you have no guilt that you could feel. You really think you're going good with all that you collect, but then again, of course you would. Secure, contain, protect. I think that about does it for today. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you're all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Big Sip, Tomothy, Zargaran, The Morrigan, James Saba, O Crap Guy, Heroin Sick, Cassie Eleven, Fire of Prime, Indy vs. the World, Spencer Arduin, Rubbish Bin 69, Dr. Wolf 13, Cupster, Worthy Fire, Zazapan, Lemke, Signar, Alatreon, Your Local Foundation Agent, Derivative, Lost Boy, and Lyndon B. Johnson. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.